put back and forth and back and forth. Okay, well, is there any music that the people can listen to, or is it fine? Uh, yes, it's, it's cool. done now. Huh? We are back yeah, now. Done. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, we are done now. Is it okay over there? Are we? Are you hearing me? Yeah. Okay. So we'll go back to the scriptures. Thank God, it's just two verses. We have to do it right. We don't want half baked bread. And uh, we want a proper meal. It's not about human beings. It's about God. Okay? So Romans 8, 26 to 27. And it reads, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, just like now. You see? It doesn't go far. Likewise, likewise, in every situation, in your situation, in my situation, in any situation, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself, the Spirit himself, not the Spirit itself, the Spirit himself. I want us to pick this right from the beginning. The Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. May the Holy Spirit pray for us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's get into the, into the message of today. As we know, the title is Our Divine Helper. Our Divine Helper. And that passage was very short. And you know me that I, I want us to, to know the word rather than what I'm saying. So, of course, we'll have other passages to, to expound on. So, our divine helper. Why does the church seem to be without help if we have a divine helper? Why does the body of Christ seem to be without harmony? Why does the body of Christ seem to have division, seem, I'm, I'm saying seem, yeah? Why does the body of Christ seem to have divisions or discrepancies? Why? Uh -huh. Now I'm getting you to think. I want you to think. Why does it look like there is disharmony in Christianity? The body of Christ. I want to start by saying, because there's no glue. There's no glue. The body is disjointed. There's disharmony. There seems to be divisions because there's no glue. So, you know, some parts of the body are out of joint. So we don't want it to stay that way. The, the fact is that without the Holy Spirit, our divine helper, the hand wants to operate on its own and carry on without the leg. The ear wants to just hear and forget the eye. The mouth wants to just do its thing and forget the nose. Yet we are the body of Christ. I want us to go to First Corinthians chapter 12 because I want us to see the, the, the thing in the word so that you don't have to depend on what I'm saying at any time. First Corinthians 
chapter 12. And this is a bit longer read from verse 15 to 26. Or if you don't mind, I will read from verse 12 and just go down. So let us read. Let us follow, listen to the word of God. He says, for as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. And we are what? Christians, the body of Christ. But the body has different members. I want us to follow. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. One spirit, one body. No distinction. Whether Jew or Greek, whether slave or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Christ is the head, the church is the body, and we are dealing with one spirit. We are focusing on the Holy Spirit today. We need to follow it. Our divine helper, it is the Holy Spirit that we are talking about, the third person of the Godhead. Verse 14, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 14. For in fact, the body is not one member, uh, is not one member, but many. The body is not one member, it's not just one block of a body but it has many members. If the foot, verse 15, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smiling? But now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. Many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it that there should be no schism, no division, no discrepancy in the body, but that the member should have the same care for one another. The member should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now, you are the body of Christ. And members individually. 
you are the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. I am the body of Christ. Different members, but one body. May the Lord reveal the mysteries and truth of his word to us in Jesus' name. Okay. So now we've got that. So the question then remains, so what is lacking? If this is written, if we know this, if we know that the eye cannot do without the ear and the ear cannot do without the mouth, what is lacking? The answer is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of perfection, the spirit of the living God, the God that created the body as he wished, just the way he wanted, as he pleased, according to that first Corinthians 12 verse 18. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. Not as you wanted, not as I wanted. And without the spirit, the glue, to join the eye, the nose, the mouth, the, the hands, the legs together, the body is disjointed. But So we have forgotten to treat the body of Christ according to what God wants, and we have chosen to do it our way. That's why there seems to be all this disharmony and, and discrepancy and... and and, and division. People attend, you know, some weekly religious activity in church, and they and and they they are convinced they are Christians because you attended some religious activity. Everybody can attend some activity. If you went to church and did not meet with the Christ of the church. How can you call yourself a Christian? You just went to clap, dance, sing. You enjoyed yourself, and you went home. You, you have no clue who Christ is. So how can you call yourself a Christian? It's time to wake up. Jesus Christ is the head, and we are his body. The church is supposed to be the body of Christ. And yet, we, we operate without the head. What does that make us? Headless chickens. That's why we run helter skelter. That's why we don't know what we are doing. Jesus is the head. You claim to be his body, and yet you go to a church. Oh, I, you know, because we are talking, now I want us to understand that because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian. If you go to church and you didn't meet with Christ, the head, so you, you are just the body running around. You are dead. That's why there seems to be this harmony in the church without the Holy Spirit, who is the one joining the head to the body so that it can function. We just read there, that is one body, one, one spirit. Verse 13, for by one spirit we were all, verse, verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 12, for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. One spirit, one body. Whether Jews or Greek, whether slave or free, and so we have all been made to drink into one spirit. So when you attend your religious activities and just go there to dance and meet your friends and chat, and you didn't meet with Christ, how can you call yourself a Christian? Things, these things need to change. You dance with the devil on Friday and Saturday, and then Sunday you go and dance in church. Then you call yourself a Christian. We we need to wake up. We don't we haven't got time to play that religious games anymore. Christianity is not a religion. If you have no revelation in Christianity, that means you are you are just doing what other 
So would those who call themselves religion be? Don't call Christianity a religion because I don't do religion. You need the revelation of the Holy Spirit, our divine help. Without him, the head is doing his thing, the body is doing his thing. So the body is just a headless chicken. That must stop. This is why the Holy Spirit is bringing this message. Think. Don't just do because others do. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? Oh, my father used to do that. My mother used to do that. My grandfather, my grandmother. So I'm just doing it. Then you are headless chicken. Because you have no head to think. You better make sure you attach the head to your body. So that there will be conformity. There will be harmony. If we continue to do that, then we are still guilty of Psalm 118 verse 22. Jesus said it in his days. The stone which the builders rejected has become the head corner stone. You see, the world is still rejecting the corner stone, and yet they, they claim to build a house. How can you build a house without the corner stone, the pillars that are keeping the keeping the house in order. If Jesus is the chief cornerstone and you are building your so-called church without him, what do you think that church is going to be? Disjointed, no harmony, broken down. You can do something in the flesh for a while. See, this flesh gets tired. So if you do it in the flesh, you'll be tired. So, you, you know, then it will just be a Sunday party, or let's go meet our friends and sing and dance. So it's, you are just going for a party. Without the chief cornerstone, the building will collapse. Without the chief cornerstone, the body breaks in pieces, the house breaks in pieces. That is why there is division and discrepancy and disharmony. And that is not the church that Jesus died for. Jesus did not die so that you can wake up on Sunday morning to go and sing and dance. It's so that you can have divine communion, a relationship with a living God. Friday night, you go to parties and dance. Saturday night, you go to parties and dance. Sunday morning, you go to a party and dance. And you call it church. You call yourself a Christian. We have to learn to align with the word of God. What does Jesus say in John 14, 15? If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. That means do what I say. Be obedient to my word. Where in the word of God does, does it say that you should just go to, to, to a, a, a place on Sunday to, to sing and dance and enjoy yourself and go home? Who did you go to meet? Your friends or Jesus? If you love me, keep my commandments. Yet we go on and do our own thing without, without asking for his help. If you don't know, ask. Like if you go somewhere you don't know the way, don't you ask? Even if you don't ask people, you ask your satna. So why are we not asking the, the spirit of God if we want to worship God? Why are we not communicating with the spirit of God if we want to talk to God? How can you talk to God without the spirit? How can you go to church? and not meet with Jesus. Is it your church or his church? I remember he said, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Yet, you are dancing with the devil and going to destroy church, God's church, and, 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 and thinking you are, you are doing somebody a favor. 
I will build my church. It is the church of Jesus. So if he is missing, he being the head, then the body cannot function. We completely ignore the Holy Spirit because he is the glue. He is the substance, the power that keeps the head and the body together. He is the spirit of God. Without him, you don't know God. You are just doing your religious activities and it must stop. Stop doing your own thing from Monday to Saturday. And then Sunday, you, you think, yeah, who, dress up to go and show up to who? Do you know how many glorious and, you know, clothes that Jesus had? Who are you showing up to? He wants to see your heart. What comes out of your mouth when you talk? What is your lifestyle? How can we worship God if we don't have any relationship with him? And how can you have a relationship with a God that is spirit, without his spirit? God is spirit. That's what the Bible says. And that's what you know, because you don't see him running around. He is spirit. So we know God is spirit. And therefore, we have to relate to him in spirit, by his spirit. Through his spirit. The same way we are three dimensional, so is God. God is three dimensional, same as we are. You have God the Father, God the Word, because people get confused when you say God the Son. There, there, there was no Son without the Word. It was the Word that became the man Jesus in the flesh. So you have God the, the Father. God the Word, God the Spirit. Three dimensions. The Father, the Word, the Spirit. Just as we are body, soul, spirit. This is a God that said he created you and I in his image. So that's how, that's how it works. Body, soul, spirit in a human being. Father, word, spirit in the Godhead. In order to know God, we must employ his divine service. Let him teach you. But if you don't open your heart, you won't receive what I'm saying. Because the Bible is clear. We need the divine helper, the person of the Holy Spirit. We, we say he's the third person of the Holy Spirit. Because at the beginning, God the Father spoke to the world, yeah, through the prophets. All those years, before Jesus came 2,000 years ago, God was always speaking. What did the prophets hear? They heard Jesus. Jesus was not made manifest then. They heard the word of God. And they could only hear the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. God does, everything God does is to help us because he loves us. That's why he has to reduce himself to that level that you and I can understand him. That's why people are still worshiping idols because they have no understanding. How can you go and bow down to a piece of wood? Wake up. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings the understanding. Otherwise, you are just doing some idolatry and nonsense. If, even if you sat down to think, you would know it's wrong. But people are so deluded, they can't even think anymore. You would know that going into some dead, stinking temple to bow down to a piece of stone is, is, is senseless. If Abraham could know it, why not you in this modern age? Ab 
Abraham came out of Babylon, but he understood that what his father was doing was wrong because it is the heart. It's the state of your heart that is showing what you are doing. You want, you just, that's what you enjoy doing. Dance with the devil and then call yourself a believer. You go and play games with the devil and then you, you think, is that what, what Jesus died for? Without the Holy Spirit, we don't know what we are doing. That's why we need him. Without him, there's no harmony. Without him, there's no power. Without him, there's no understanding. The Holy Spirit is the one that glues the different members, different parts of the body together so that the eye stop, will stop thinking that, oh, I'm most powerful. If I don't see, the rest of the body won't see. Huh, really? Is that God or is that you? Or the leg will say, oh, if I don't carry the body, the rest of the body cannot go anywhere. Really? I'll put myself on a wheelchair and go. You see, that selfishness has to end. It, 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 we are one body in Christ. Jesus died for every human being in the world. The one that lived, the one that is alive, and the one that is not yet born. So we are doing a Christ thing here. That's why we are supposed to be Christians. And without Christ, without the Holy Spirit, you don't know the Christ. The Holy Spirit is the one that put the different members of the body together. Otherwise, they are disjointed. Otherwise, there's no understanding. Otherwise, there's no harmony. Where, where, the, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The eye doesn't quarrel with the ear. The ear doesn't quarrel with the mouth. The mouth doesn't quarrel. Yeah. There is harmony. Think, imagine your own body. One day you just take something and, and, and maybe cover your eye and decide to go to town. Tell me how far you will go. So you, you, you block away one part of your body and then you think you can function. Or you just take cotton wool and stop their ears. And then you start walking on the road. The, the cars are coming, you, you don't look. Let us break it down to see Christianity is not supposed to be far. Break it down to where you are. It's not difficult. It's because people don't want to think. I had I had somebody say, oh, when when we were growing up, we used to learn um, or hear um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Scripture. Who is the Holy Scripture? That's Jesus. So you left the Holy Spirit out automatically, and that's lack of understanding. The Father, the Son and Holy Scriptures. You've left one dimension out. Or some people say, uh, the Father, the Son, and Holy Angels. <laughs> so you, you put Holy Angels before the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that Jesus and the Father cannot walk without the Holy Spirit? God the Father, God the Son, and holy angels. Are the holy angels the Holy Spirit? One is plural, one is definitely singular because we are talking about one God. When you don't think out of the, the little box that your forefathers gave you, then you are, you are still worshiping idols. They did not know, but you you have you have your Google today to to look for for look for answers. That means you are serious about your own life. The 
the father, the, the son, and the Holy Scripture. Who is the Holy Scripture? That's Jesus, the Word of God, the Son of God. The Word that became man, flesh, the body that saved man. We, if God did not come as a human being, you would not be saved. Satan is a legalist. If Jesus, Jesus had come as a donkey, if Jesus had come as, as, a, as an angel, if Jesus had come as God, Satan would say, mm -mm, you cannot die for these clay pots. You have to come as a clay pot to die for clay pots. We are clay pots. We are made of sand. We are clay, nothing else. It is the breath of God, the spirit of God in us that gives us life. So in order for God to save us, he had to come the way he made us. He said he made us in his image to look like him. So when he formed the clay, he put his breath in us. The word became flesh. God was manifested in the flesh. He had to be manifested in the flesh to save flesh. Human beings are flesh. We have to get it once and for all so that we stop receiving lies. You don't, you don't worship God the Father, God the Son, and holy angels. God created angels. Jesus created angels. Therefore, the holy angels are not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit or the word of God, which means God himself, instructs the holy angels to come to speak to us or communicate with us. Angels are spirit beings. Spirit beings. There are uncountable number of angels. They are spirit beings, plural. So you cannot, you know, confuse angel with Holy Spirit. Holy angel and Holy Spirit are not the same thing. Angels are plural. Holy Spirit is one. So knock that God the Father, God the Son, Holy Scriptures. God the Father, God the Son, Holy Angels. Knock it out of you. Read the Bible for yourself. We need to know and acknowledge the Holy Spirit. He is the third person of the Godhead. So at the beginning, God used to speak to the prophets. And then the word came to earth. And then he left and said, I'm not leaving you alone. I'll send the comforter. And now the comforter is here. So be comforted. Forget about wrong doctrines. You have the Bible for yourself to read. It's not like in those days when people were not allowed to read the Bible. Better read it while you can. <laughs> you might get talk again. We need to know and acknowledge the Holy Spirit of God. Without him, we can never, ever know Jesus. Without him, we can never, ever know God. That means we are just doing what we like. So the body is doing its thing, headless. If you don't know the Holy Spirit of God, you don't know God. Just take it from me. So if you haven't heard of the Holy Spirit today, start digging into it. Make sure you know the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, there is no holy God. God is spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God, almighty God. The Holy Spirit is almighty God, God eternal, everlasting. He is spirit. Don't talk about God. Find out about God. Know God. Otherwise, 
you will be worshiping without understanding. You will just be doing your headless, fleshy thing. And then, by and by, you get tired. Oh, my mom used to take me to church when I was a child. Oh, I used to go to church when I did not know. Now I know that it is signs, you know? Uh, Darwin, uh, the, you know, it, uh, we, we were made from, from, from apes. Are you an ape? I am definitely not from the apes. I am in the image of Almighty God. By his pleasure, he, it, it pleased him to create me. How can I be an ape? How can I it, it, it come from uh, evolution? What kind of, you know, mindless thing is that? You are, the, you are in the image of God. And then you reduce yourself to an ape. And that's why you can't think. Simple as that. People, we, we don't have time to play games in church anymore. We need the divine helper in order to understand the divine. What we are doing is not flesh. We need the divine helper in order to understand the divine. As simple as that. So you should be asking yourself, who is the Holy Spirit? He is God eternal, like I've said. He is the God that empowered the Virgin Mary to be pregnant. We all know the virgin birth, right? The people choose to, to believe that Mary was pregnant, miraculously, divinely, supernaturally. But they don't go to ask, where is that child? What happened to that child? You, you see delusion? You, you see deception? Before Jesus ever came into the world, in Isaiah, it was prophesied that the virgin will have a child and call him counselor, you know, holy God, Emmanuel. And, and, and today we, we think, oh, oh okay, Mary, Mary had that child, but we don't know who it was or what. Uh, you're lying to yourself. You know it. You need to start believing in him. Don't allow the enemy to keep deceiving you. Go to Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 35. That's when angel Gabriel came to Mary. We all celebrate Christmas and think it's a joke. No, that is a God thing. We need to understand what Christmas is about. That is when Jesus, the God that became flesh for you and for me, came into the world. That's why it is one 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 birthday that everybody i don't care what what so-called religion you call yourself everybody celebrates christmas go, the shops will tell you go go tell the 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 retailers to stop selling at christmas yeah i know a few years ago people started saying instead of um, merry christmas they were saying uh happy holidays what holidays are you celebrating you are dead father or you are dead mother we are not celebrating the birthday of a dead God. Jesus is alive. It is him we celebrate at Christmas. And that's why his birthday party is the most glorious. Some people don't even remember their birthdays during the, during the year. But everybody knows when Christmas comes. I don't care how the enemy wants to twist it around. Happy holiday, year-end holiday. Who, what holiday are you celebrating? Speak it up if you are not uh, afraid. What, what holiday are you celebrating? What are you commemorating? What is the, 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 the point of the holiday? See, people want to hear lies. That's why they agree with things like that. It is Merry Christmas, like it or not. 
Christ mercy holiday. Christ mass birthday party. So start to enjoy Christmas. It's not the Christmas tree that you worship. No, that's just decoration. You throw it away. Don't let people tell you oh, if you put up Christmas tree that you are worshiping tree. Are you worshiping a tree? I'm not worshiping a tree. You don't have to have the tree. It's, it's just a decoration. Because at the end of the day, you throw it away. So it doesn't mean anything. We need to get the truth. Angel Gabriel in Luke chapter 1, verse 35. Then the angel, I'm reading the Amplified Version, so that because I want us to get it. Then the angel, Gabriel, replied her, Mary, and said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the most high will overshadow you like a cloud. That means the glory of God, the power of God, the kavod of God will come upon you. And for that reason, the holy, pure, and sinless child that you will be pregnant with shall be called the Son of God. That is why the Word of God became the Son of God. We all know Mary had a child on her own without a husband. Joseph was supposed to marry her, but Joseph was told, you know, don't touch her because she has been chosen. You see, that's why I keep saying it pleased God to choose Mary. It pleased God to choose you and I in this in this our generation. You are God's pleasure to live for his pleasure. Let the flesh die. It amounts to nothing. You need to live in the spirit. So if the if the holy angel, angel Gabriel, came to Mary and said, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. So that the child that you will carry shall be called the Son of God. That means that the man Jesus, the son that Mary had, is a child of the Holy Spirit. So how can you compare the Holy Spirit to a holy angel? It was the holy angel that came to, came to give the message. The Holy Spirit brought Jesus to the world through Mary. So Jesus is holy. Holy Spirit is holy. Jesus is the son of the Holy Spirit. So when you say God the Father, God the Son, what are you talking about? You see, God is one. There is no disharmony in the Godhead. It's just dimensions, like I said. God, the Holy Spirit, that overshadowed Mary, is God most high, according to that passage. You will, the Spirit of the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High. So Holy Spirit is the Most High God. Stop, stop treating comparing him to angels, same as you cannot compare Jesus to Satan, to Lucifer, whatever you call him. You can't, you can't compare Jesus to Lucifer. Jesus is God, Lucifer is an angel, or was an angel, or is still a, a devil angel, or what? Called Satan, serpent, whatever. We need to wake up. We have no time. Jesus is the son of God, the son of the Holy Spirit, the son of the Father. When Jesus says, I and the Father are one, it is only because they are the one and same spirit. I and the Father are one. So Jesus and the Father have the same spirit. So the Holy Spirit we are talking about is the spirit of the Father, the spirit of the Son. Same spirit, one spirit. A 
I'll make it clear. Let's go to Genesis, the very first uh, uh, chapter of the Bible. Let's start from the very beginning. It's always a very good place to start. Go to Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, right at the beginning. Because God made it very clear, right from the word go. Genesis 1, 1 to 3. That explains God, the Father, the Son, or the Word, and His Spirit. So if God told you He is Father, Son, Spirit, right from day one, where is the confusion? So Genesis 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning, right from when He started for us human beings, not for God. God always was, okay? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, empty. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, just as he hovered over Mary. The same, same thing. The Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the waters. Then God spoke. Let there be light, and there was light here today. It has never been turned on or off. Once God said, let there be light, there's always light. And that the same God that spoke his word, the same spirit that made it happen is still doing the same for you and I today. And I want us to start to rejoice. He has not changed. Start to rejoice. This is the image that you were made in. Three dimensional. You have your body, you have your soul, you have your spirit. Don't confuse spirit and soul. They are, they are not the same thing. We are three-dimensional. The body, the soul, the spirit. The father, the word, the spirit. Same, same thing. So if you have this right at the beginning, there, should not, there shouldn't be any confusion, should there? Okay. So the rest of the Bible is just explaining what, where it started, isn't it? Aha. Uh -huh. So, the Holy Spirit in Luke overshadowed Mary, just like the Holy Spirit in Genesis overshadowed the void. And out of that void, out of that darkness, something so beautiful as the world, the galaxies and everything came up. I know we have destroyed the world, but that was never God's plan. God is perfect, so he, he didn't create this broken down world. We sinned, and so sin came into the world and started breaking things down. So where the Spirit of the Lord is not present, there will be brokenness. There won't be any alignment. There will be disharmony. That's why people hurt. That's why people don't understand. Oh, why do I go to church and I still suffer this thing? Why do I call on God? It's because you don't know the God you are calling on. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry because I want you to win. You just call on some, you know, Im imagination in your head and you think it's God. No, know him. That's why he had to come in the physical so that we can, we can see that he looks like us and we like him. And he said he had to go so that the Holy Spirit can come. So that now, instead of one Jesus walking around in Israel, there are uncountable number of Jesuses walking around the world now. The earth realm. Because I am the living Jesus. And anybody who believes in him is the living Jesus. So the original living Jesus is in heaven. And then we, his children, are the living Jesus here on earth. So we are representing him. That's why Paul says we are Christ's ambassadors. You are supposed to represent heaven here on earth. 
you are Christ's ambassador. By the power of his spirit, the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit of God, there is no light. We just read it in Genesis. Everything was modeled up. And the Holy Spirit was working. Then the Father spoke. And the word went out. And the power came in. And everything changed. Without the Holy Spirit of God, there's no light. There is no creation. There is no transformation in your life and in my life. There is no power in Christianity when we remove the Holy Spirit, when we have no knowledge of the Holy Spirit. In Genesis, we see the Father, his word, and his spirit in total harmony. Total harmony. The Father, the word, and the spirit. In the beginning, everything was God, but the Spirit of God was over. And then the Word of God went out, and the power, and then we have creation. Without that combination, there is no creation, no life, no transformation, no power. Nothing happens. Everything is dead. That's why people go to church and they and they say the church is dead. The church is not dead. It's because you've thrown out the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not die so that we go to church to dance, to please our flesh. We are talking about one God, three aspects of that one God, or three dimensions of that one God. But we are talking about one almighty God, eternal God. There is no life without the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus says in John chapter 6, verse 63, and uh, you hear me say this again and again because we need to know this. Gospel of John chapter 6, verse 63. Jesus says, it is the spirit, it is the spirit who gives life, who gives life. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Anything you do in the flesh is useless. Without the spirit, there is no life. Jesus says, the words that I speak to you are spirit. So I'm releasing my spirit to you. The words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So when I release my word, because I'm God, God is always speaking. It is his word that we hear. And the power in that word, because it's the word of God, that's what changes us. That's what transforms life. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh amounts to nothing. It profits nothing. And the word of God is a life-giving word, a transforming word, a creative word. So there is complete agreement in this situation, complete agreement between Jesus, the word of God, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus introduced the Holy Spirit. He made known the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit makes known Jesus to us. So Jesus kept talking about the Holy Spirit when he, the Spirit of truth, comes. Now I'm talking to you. You are seeing me in the flesh. You don't know who I am until I go and my spirit comes back. Then when I'm inside of you, I'll start to remind you of all these things. I had to come in the flesh so that you can see that I'm not a figment of your imagination. There is never 
any discrepancy or disharmony between the Father, the Word, or the Son after Jesus came and His Spirit. Never. Jesus kept talking about the Holy Spirit, about His Father. We are one. We are one. We are one. There's no, there's no discrepancy. Jesus made the Holy Spirit known, and now the Holy Spirit is making Jesus known. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't know Jesus. You cannot. Who is, who is teaching you? What I'm, if, if I'm just telling you from my own influential here and go out there, you, you won't change your life because my word has no power. It's the word of God that has power. That's why we have to know the word of God. Jesus says, the words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So to bring a change and to bring transformation, to change your life, you need the word of God. That's why Jesus came, the word of God. So he comes, his spirit empowers you. That's why he said, wait in Jerusalem to the disciples. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So the same way the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, and Mary was pregnant with Jesus, that's how the Holy Spirit is supposed to come upon us, and we should carry Jesus. Every day, by the power of the Holy Spirit. When you say you are the living Jesus, how, how, can, how can I carry a whole man? I'm carrying his spirit. Same way, Mary carried him. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are part and parcel of the Father. Jesus says, I and the Father are one. He says, the words I speak to you are spirit and life. So we are talking about the same thing, the same person. They are part and parcel of each other. The, the word doesn't go out without the Father. Same, same way you don't go to the to town without your eye. The, we have got the Father, God the Word, God the Spirit. I say it again. God the Father, God the Word, God the Spirit. One God. There is no Father without the Word. And there is no word without the spirit. There's no father without the spirit, and there's no spirit without the word. There is no, it, it cannot work differently. There, if, if you are dumb, nobody ever hears your voice. So are we serving a dumb God? No. That's why there is no you without your voice. Even even if you don't see me now, for example, or you shut down your camera, or you turned away, you are still hearing my voice. Will you say you are hearing the voice of uh, Patricia, for example? Will you say you are hearing the voice of Angela, for example? No, you are still hearing the voice of Victoria. Because my voice is me. My word is me. Why, why, why do we separate the word of God from God? And if I have no living breath in me, that means I can't speak. So that's the spirit bringing utterance so that when I, I open my mouth, you don't just see my mouth, you hear something come out because I have a living spirit, I'm alive. So whether you see me or not, when you hear my voice, you are hearing me. And I can only speak because I'm alive. Open your Bibles to 1 John. 
1, 5. The epistle of John. Not, not the gospel now, but the little later. Uh, 1 John, the uh, first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7. One John five seven. Okay, first epistle of John, chapter five, verse seven. It said, "For there are three, there are three that bear witness in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. These three are one." These three are one. There are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. First epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7. 1 John 5, 7. Never ever confuse who the Father is, who the Son is, who the Spirit is. If what I'm saying is not enough, there are many more passages in the Bible. Like if you if you read the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John explains it so well. All the things that Jesus used to say that the disciples could not understand. That's why people don't understand God without the Spirit. Jesus spoke to his disciples, they could not understand. And Jesus acknowledged it. I have so much to tell you, but I know you don't get it now. But I have to go so that the Spirit can come. Because now the Spirit lives in us, explaining these things to us. So if you reject the Spirit, you have no understanding. As simple as that. So start asking Jesus. To come and live in you by his spirit. You are not carrying a whole man and putting him in you. You are talking about a spiritual God, a God that is spirit. Please, 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 please. Don't let anything confuse you again about what the body of Christ is. We need to search, look for understanding. You receive not because you ask not. The spirit is free. God is free, he's the air you breathe. Only the Holy Spirit of God can bring the harmony that is required in the body of Christ. If you don't understand the Holy Spirit, there's no harmony, it's just Sunday morning party or Sunday evening party, whatever, whenever you do it. If there is disharmony in the body, that means that the, the spirit, the spirit, which is the glue, is missing. That means the, the body is disjointed. The head, nobody even knows where he is. Oh, Jesus is in heaven, fine. We are here on, head, on earth, headless chicken. And even when we are headless, the, the hand is doing its thing, the head leg is doing its thing, the ear is doing its thing, the eye is doing its thing. Because we have pushed away the Holy Spirit, or we have no concept of who God is, because we, we have rejected his spirit. Read the Bible, it's all there. It is very, very important. To, to, to engage the guidance of the Holy Spirit. To, to want to be led by him. They that are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Are you a child of God? I am a child of God because I've chosen to allow the Holy Spirit to come and live in me and teach me and talk to me. He is my managing director. Without him, I can't survive. Without him, you cannot breathe, I'm telling you. 
Because God created you in his pleasure, for his pleasure. So if you don't live for his pleasure, that means you are just living a life that has no meaning. Because he made us to look like him, to think like him, to, to represent him here on earth. So we cannot go around doing our thing, dancing with the enemy on, on Friday night and Saturday night and dancing in the church on, on Sunday and, and saying you are a Christian. Choose which side you want to belong to. Jesus is very clear. He's not by force. He, he has died for you already. Take it or leave it. He is God. He's not dead. So he's alive in heaven. But you have to now choose whether to accept that gift or not. But remember, there is consequence. Whatever you choose to do, there is a consequence. If you are not led by the spirit of God, you have no understanding of what you worship. Because God is spirit. So you have to relate to him only in spirit, by spirit, through spirit. And that's why he gave you a spirit, body, soul, spirit. So that you can use your spirit that he put in you to talk to him. People don't have an understanding of God because they are not using the spirit man in them. They are dealing with the flesh and the emotion, the soul. Oh, I feel like that. That's your soul telling you that. I want, I want to eat. I want to sleep. I want. That's the soul telling the body what to do. That means you have killed your spirit. The spirit, your spirit, is supposed to talk to God, and that's where your nourishment should come from. So that when the soul says, "I want to eat," your spirit says, "No, you should be fasting today," because when you fast, you get stronger. When you fast, your spirit man grows. Your body may be weak, but you are growing in spirit. Because in our weaknesses, he helps us. When you don't know what to do, that's what we read in Romans 8 this morning. When you don't know, when the flesh doesn't know what to do, the spirit communicates with the spirit of God, and then you, you, you receive power. You are empowered. So when the soul says, let's eat, let's sleep, your spirit, because it's alive, is talking to God. So you don't even bother what these two are doing because you are on a higher realm. Body, soul, spirit. We should be ruled by the spirit, not by the soul and the body. That's why we need the living of the Holy Spirit. We worship a divine God Therefore, we need our divine help. The Bible says, he who has ears, let him hear. You need your divine helper. I need my divine helper in order to understand the divine. Because what we are doing is not flesh and blood. It's not religion. Okay. I'm very, very sure that you've been empowered, you've been fed. This is an introduction. I believe we are going to deal more with the Holy Spirit next time. This is laying the foundation so that we will never, ever be confused who the Father is, who the Son is, who His Spirit is. The Father, the Word, His Spirit. They should, there is never a disharmony between the Father, His Word, and His Spirit. So we have to get it, lay that foundation very, very firm. Jesus says, Peter, you are the rock. Put your name in Peter's place as well. God is building his church through you and I now. Peter has done his own, and he succeeded. So it's your turn and my turn to do it and succeed. We are the body of Christ, and he is the head. So we are complete in him. Because the glue, the Holy Spirit, the power of God joins the head to the body. And so we can call ourselves Christians. May the Lord make the seed of this word 
be planted deep in you. May it germinate, may it grow, and may it bear fruit so that what you have received, you can also give away. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let's go into the communion. And I believe after this, the communion will make even better sense if we didn't make more, you know, if we didn't make enough sense before. Every day we learn. Every day we learn. That's why you can never say, oh, I read the Bible once through. I don't need to read it again. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to read it every day because it's hidden. It's hidden. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can read it all you like. You have no understanding. But once the Holy Spirit comes, when he's in you, when you start to read, he will, he will, he will just flash like a flashlight. He will bring something up and you're like, oh, okay, I did not know this. I've been, I've been praying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and yet I'm wanting. Eh, because you, are, you were just reciting something. You didn't understand what it meant. The Lord is my shepherd. I cannot want. There's no way I can want. Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So if you depend on your employer, you will want. If that business falls off, you will want. But if Jesus is your employer, if he is your boss, you can never want. He knows how to lead you and guide you in hard times like we are now. Don't work for your employer, work for Jesus. Harmonize with Jesus. Let his spirit teach you and lead you and guide you. So that whatever we do, we do it for his honor, to his glory. So that every our life will then be smooth. We 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 have harmony. Everything is in the correct position. Our 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 bodies are not disjointed. You can see it at the at the church. You can see it as your body. If the eye hurts, all your body hurts. If your tooth hurts, all your body hurts. It's not different. So there has to be harmony in the body. We care for each other. We understand that, you know, if I'm the eye, then I need to take care of the ear. If I'm the ear, I have to take care of the mouth. So it works in perfect harmony. Okay, let's leave it there for today. Make sure you, you do more research during the week because I believe we are going to talk more about the Holy Spirit so that we will know the God that we worship. So it won't just be a Sunday routine or, or a weekly exercise. Okay, may the Lord bless his holy word and, and make it become a seed. Jesus says the word I speak to you are spirit and life. May this word become life. May it be made flesh. May it be made manifest in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's communion time. Get your element ready. It's communion time. Just rejoice. You have been blessed. You have learned something new. That's what I keep saying. The life of a Christian can only be better. Your tomorrow has to be better than your yesterday. Because you grow in knowledge. You, you, are, you are growing every day in Christ Jesus. The, the life of a Christian is always better. Your tomorrow has to be better than your today and your yesterday. Because you grow in knowledge, in wisdom, in understanding. So, and knowledge is power, they say. You see? Right. Your elements are ready, sense. I hope your heart were burning. That's when it, you know it's working. Oh, did our hearts not burn when he was talking? <laughs> That's the guys in Luke when they heard Jesus. Your heart needs to burn because the Holy Spirit needs to bring that transformation, new life. David says, oh, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. That's what you need to cry out. 
transform me, Lord. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Give me your Holy Spirit to sustain me. Because the flesh will be weak. The flesh is always weak. That's why we are going to take the communion. Because it's divine. The power of the Holy Spirit will overshadow these gifts so that it now becomes life-giving. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, it's what he means. So you are not just eating bread and drinking wine or water or, or anything you have. It's divine. It's no more the physical. The power of the Holy Spirit comes on these particles, on these elements, and it is transformed. So you eat one tiny piece of broken bread and, and you feel like you can pull up a tree. You can move mountains. That's what Jesus says. If you, if you have faith, just like the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains because it's divine. It's not you. It's as simple as that. So let's get ourselves ready. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for all these things that you are revealing to us. Thank you for your love, almighty God. Thank you for your presence in our lives. Thank you that you don't want us to live in the dark because you are the God of light. Where there is light, there can never be darkness. So anything that was shrouded, that was covered, we command light right now, right like in Genesis, from the beginning of the Bible. We speak light to every situation that, that was covered with darkness. We command the light of God to shine right now and to bring revelation so that everything that was modeled up will be recreated and we will receive new life in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Father, accept our gift. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, may this become the body of our Savior Jesus Christ. That body that was broken so that ours may be made whole. Lord, we receive wholeness. We receive life. Everything that Jesus went through for us, he took the bad so we can receive his good. Lord Jesus, we receive you right now. By the reason of these broken pieces of bread. And we receive you and we declare that by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the will of God, by the pleasure of Almighty God, that we are made whole, so that we can live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And at the end of the supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And he also gave thanks to the Father. And so, Father, we give thanks to you. And as Jesus poured himself out for us, Lord, we receive everything that he's pouring into us right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we drink this wine, we declare that from inside out, our sins are washed away. We are without reproach in the eyes of God. The precious blood of Jesus is speaking in heaven on our behalf. When the enemy comes to accuse of us, of us of past sin, the blood of Jesus will declare in heaven, no, not guilty. I have paid the price of our guilt. I have paid the price of his guilt. He is mine. So Jesus, we agree that we are yours and you are ours. You live in us and we live in you. 
by the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, most holy Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. The body of Christ. The most precious blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we pray? Most wonderful and everlasting God, Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, by your pleasure, you created us. And Lord, today, with all that we know, we have made up our mind to live for your pleasure. We thank you for choosing us. Human beings would not have chosen us, but you loved us so much that you sent your son by the power of the Holy Spirit to come into this earth and you made your word become just like us because you want to use your word to change us. And that's why Jesus says, the word I speak as spirit and life. May the life of God come into us by the reason of this communion in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that now we have this sweet fellowship, this sweet communion with the Holy Spirit. And we understand better how we interact with you. Thank you for being so patient with us. Thank you for loving us so much. And thank you for never leaving us. Thank you that you continue on a daily basis to help us, to teach us, to guide us, to direct us. Your mercies, your compassion are new every morning. We thank you. God the Father. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen, amen.